Well, people have been waiting for it and here it is. The review of the best sword in my collection currently. The Albion Knecht Mark II. This is a German Kriegsmesser, also known as a war knife. It's a literal translation. And uh, this type of sword was popular in the late 15th and early 16th century. So late medieval and renaissance period. And well, it's quite an expensive reproduction. You can find it for $1,760 on Albion's website, albion-swords.com, and uh, Caldothina is offering it for $1,734.95 currently. So obviously that's a lot of money to invest into a hobby. What do you get for it? Well, let's take a look. The blade is made of 6150 steel, which is a fine grain carbon chromium alloy steel, which is excellent in terms of shock and abrasion resistance, as well as toughness. Albion blades seem to have an average Rockwell hardness of 54.5, so that's a very good balance between strength and toughness. During the manufacturing process, the steel is first precision cut into a sword blank and then hand ground into its final shape. This way of making a sword by cutting and grinding was already done in medieval times, so it is in fact a historically accurate way of doing it, not with modern machines of course, but it was done. Forging versus stock removal both have their pros and cons. Neither is better than the other inherently. The guard and pommel cap were cast in mild steel and the guard has this additional lug on the side here, which in German was called Nagel, literally translates to nail, which was attached with a rivet, which is hard to see because it's all polished here. The purpose of this is to protect the knuckles as you're holding it, to make them less available as a target, and also this allows you to catch the opponent's blade on the flat without fear of the blade sliding down and cutting your hand. The wooden grip slabs are attached with tubular rivets. And what I really like about this design is that it's enclosed. Usually when this kind of handle scale design is used, the tang is exposed on the sides, but they shaped it so that it encloses it fully. And uh, that's quite nice. That way you don't have to worry about the tang rusting as it comes in contact with the hands frequently. And uh, it's also hollow ground along the entire length, both the grip and the pommel cap, which gives a really comfortable grip. In fact, as you're holding it, there's a tendency for the fingertips to kind of fall into this groove, which um, makes it very easy to feel the edge alignment and uh, just makes for a very comfortable, secure grip. So this is not slippery at all. Also due to the way it's beveled overall, it's definitely not coming out of the hand. So you don't need an additional wrap or anything. Uh, this is not slick at all. So the hands just really lock onto the grip nicely. The blade has a very pronounced distal taper, which you can probably even see at a distance. It starts out fairly thick and then becomes gradually thinner towards the point. Let's see how thick it is near the guard, seven and a quarter millimeters. And towards the point, it has tapered down to three and a quarter millimeters. So that is definitely very significant. And uh, it does make for a beautiful dynamic balance that makes the sword feel incredibly lively in the hand. It just wants to move and flow. It's not very heavy. If I remember correctly, it's 1.34 kilograms, but I'll post the measurements down below in the video description as usual. The point of balance is 12 and a half centimeters or a little over five inches away from the guard. So that's a good compromise between cutting power and maneuverability. When dry handling it, it seems like it emphasizes agility more. It's a very nimble feeling sword. But as soon as you use it, you find out immediately just how powerful of a cutter this is. It also has a fairly wide fuller that extends a little past the center of percussion. As far as the flexibility is concerned, it's stiff enough that I can't flex it very far by hand, but it's flexible enough to absorb a lot of shock. Speaking of shock, the dynamic balance is very good. You feel the tang vibrate, but even when cutting into hard targets, it doesn't hurt. There's not much hand shock. The blade geometry is excellent. It has a full flat grind from the fuller to the edge, and the thin triangular cross section makes it bite deeply into the target and has very little friction as it moves through it. 
It comes with a paper cutting sharp edge. Personally, I prefer a shaving sharp edge on a sword, but it's very easy to touch this up. Because the edge geometry is so good, it took me about five minutes, maybe, to hone it a little more. And now it's what you could call scary sharp. But I cut with a factory edge just fine. It's definitely sharp enough. No complaints there. The fit and finish are, well, high end. You definitely get what you pay for here. In fact, I'd say they are, well, freaking amazing. I've been trying to hold back here to not sound like a mindless fanboy, but I am very, very impressed with that. I mean, I'm impressed by everything about this. Handling, cutting performance, fit and finish, everything, really. They actually hammer the guard onto the blade so that the opening in the guard expands and really is lodged in place. If you were to remove the handle scales, the guard would still be on and uh, you would probably have to pound it quite a bit to get it off. That sounds wrong. The pommel cap is also very tightly fitted. In fact, in some spots, the transition between the pommel cap and the grip is so smooth that you can hardly even feel it. I don't know how it's attached, if it's glue or pressure fitted or a combination of both, but in any case, this is not coming loose anytime soon or ever, really. The lines on the guard are all crisp and clean. There are no casting marks left. It's very smoothly polished. So how did it hold up in my tests? Well, I've put it through the same abusive testing routine that has broken cheaper swords, and you can barely even tell that it has been used at first glance. If you take a closer look on the blade, you will see some scratches, which are pretty superficial and are easy to polish out. The edge was very, very minimally dulled in some spots, but like I said, it took me about five minutes to rehome the edge. There is a slight bit of damage here on the grip. I think this happened during transport when I had it in a bag with other swords. I'm assuming the, the, the guard or pommel or something banged against it. There are also some tiny nicks on the corner of the spine here, but otherwise nothing. It's still absolutely solid. Nothing is loosened up. And that even though I botched a few of the cuts into the wood, where it kind of came in at a bad angle, which puts a lot of stress on the blade, but no problem at all. As far as the cutting performance is concerned, well, the consensus at the local historical martial arts club where I practice is that this is basically like a cheat code for cutting. It's like the Konami code of swords. It makes it very easy. Our instructor, Eric, was very impressed by how effortless it makes the cutting. And a friend of mine who is not trained in swordsmanship and tried cutting for the first time did just fine with it. The blade really does a lot of the work for you. Of course, you can still mess it up if your edge alignment is grossly off, but the blade is just a beast. It wants to cut and it makes it quite easy. So now I've been babbling on about how wonderful the sword is. What about the negative aspects? Since I always try to find both pros and cons, well, cons, it's pricey. What can I say? It's pretty expensive. That's a lot of money to put down on a sword. I also understand that the materials and the working hours all have their price. No doubt about it. It's expensive to produce these, so I can understand that. But from a consumer's point of view, this is not very affordable, of course, even if you do get what you pay for. Anything else? Not really, I'm sorry, I cannot find anything else. I wish it had a false edge towards the point, but, well, not all the originals did either, and it's just a personal preference. That would make it even better, in my opinion, but otherwise, I can't say exactly how authentic of a reproduction it is. I'm, I don't know if they base it on a particular museum find. I've seen specifications for two other German war knives and they were significantly heavier, but they were also a little larger. And uh, there will, of course, always be some variation in the measurements. But um, I like it the way it is. Could it be a little heavier to get even more cutting power? I suppose it could be, but is it necessary? Not at all. I mean, this cuts beautifully, as you've seen. So, um, yeah, I really, the only thing I can mention 
is the price. I, there's not even anything I can nitpick about it. Uh, in case of the caseness, I could nitpick a little bit about the sharpness. It was not quite as sharp as I, I would have liked. This, well, I also resharpened it to make it just a little sharper, but the way it came, it's fine. That's definitely not something I can take issue with. So um, what can I say? If you can afford it, get it. That's really all I can say. Um, Albion does offer a payment plan, so you can put down a certain percentage of the price, so they start working on it, and then you can just pay off as much as you like, monthly or whenever you like, really, and as soon as they have the full amount, they will ship it out to you. They have a backlog, and the delivery time is usually about three months, can be a little more or a little less. Uh, in my cases, with both purchases from Albion, they were actually quicker than they said they would be, which is nice. So you have some time to save up for it or go for the payment plan. Um, it's still a lot of money, of course. I mean, Albion has other high quality swords that cost a little more than half of this. So it's certainly quite the investment. Uh, however, you may be able to find it used. It has become my favorite sword. It's the best thing I've tried so far. And I know how terribly fanboyish this sounds, but hey, I'm genuinely impressed with it. So uh, that's just how it is. And it never fails to impress anyone who picks it up and handles it. So let's end this here. I've praised it enough and rambled on about it. So um, I hope you found this helpful and maybe entertaining and whatever else. So um, thank you for watching.